If you ever see someone sharing this chart on social media, I encourage you to share this video back at them because I'm about to explain why that chart is completely dishonest and pretty much a total lie. Hey, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another debunking video. This is the first video in what I'm calling my first ever debunking week, where I'll be debunking one vaccine topic that I've missed in the past month every single day, Monday through Friday. Usually I try to post a video every single week, but in the past month I haven't done that because I have a full-time job outside of this YouTube channel, this is not my full-time job, and I also have two kids, which is its own full-time job. So in the past month or so, there have been a lot of misinformation topics that I haven't covered, and I'd like to get to them quickly and efficiently, so... This is my solution to that. I hope you enjoy it, and let's get to debunking this awful chart. This chart is made by a lawyer named Aaron Siri, who is a close associate to anti-vaxxers like Dell Bigtree and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. These people all like to say that vaccine trials aren't done correctly. They all like to say that vaccine clinical trials don't have saline placebo controls, and therefore they're not valid. Or they don't have a long enough follow-up time, and therefore they're not valid. All of this is complete nonsense and total misunderstanding of the science at best, and at worst, it's a complete lie. All vaccines and all drugs in general are required to go through randomized clinical trials before they get licensed and rolled out to the general population. And yes, every vaccine currently on the market has gone through pre-licensure randomized control trials. I will get to some specific examples and details in a bit, but before that, it's really important to understand that these pre-licensure clinical trials are not the end-all be-all for vaccines. In fact, for any drug, it's not our best data showing that they're safe. The best way to determine exactly how safe a drug or a vaccine is, is to study it after it's been rolled out in a large population. At least when it comes to rare side effects, that's definitely the best way. Before a vaccine or a drug gets licensed, it goes through phase one, two, and three clinical trials. All of these are randomized and each one scales up in the number of participants in order to assess safety and efficacy. By the time you get to phase three clinical trials, you should be able to catch most of the common adverse side effects that any drug or vaccine may be causing. But even large clinical trials that involve tens of thousands of people are probably not going to catch rare adverse events that are, say, one in a million or one in 100,000. Statistically, you're just not likely to get a strong signal for events that rare when you have tens of thousands of people in your trial. That's why oftentimes our best safety data for drugs and vaccines comes from after they get rolled out to the general population. These are called post-licensure studies or surveillance studies. These studies allow us to examine the effects of the drug or vaccine in a large population of millions of people and ask questions like, are the people receiving the drug having higher rates of any rare adverse events than the population of people who don't receive that drug or vaccine. And these studies are always done for drugs and vaccines all over the world. These studies are done by lots of different people, including independent research groups at universities or research groups from health agencies or pharmaceutical companies themselves. Again, this is information that people like Aaron Siri, Del Bigtree, and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. don't want you to think about. They don't want to acknowledge the fact that vaccines are heavily studied post licensure for rare adverse events and continued effectiveness in the general population. And when we get hints of rare adverse events, action is taken. You can see this during the COVID pandemic, where certain COVID vaccines were paused when rare adverse events became apparent. You can also see it in the previous rotavirus vaccine, which had a very rare adverse event that was very serious. And now the new one does not have that risk. And there are several other examples in vaccine history that you can point to. So that's what they want you to ignore completely. But let's get back to this chart which falsely claims that vaccines are not studied pre-licensure against a placebo. They are. First, let's talk about what a placebo is. A placebo is just a substance that has no therapeutic value in a given context. For example, if I wanted to study the effects of a pink bubblegum-flavored Flintstones vitamin tablet, then a placebo would not be just taking an injection of salt water, or drinking salt water, or anything to do with saline. Why? Because it would destroy the randomization part of the whole experiment. People who got the saline would know that they didn't get a pink bubblegum flavored Flintstones tablet. You would have to give an identical pink bubblegum flavored Flintstones tablet that just didn't have any vitamins in it and then study the effects of 
what the vitamins did in the group that got the vitamins. The point is, a placebo does not have to be saline. And that's what these people like Aaron Seary and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will constantly tell you. They will try their best to convince you that a placebo must be saline. And that is just not true. But nevertheless, there are several vaccines that have been studied with a genuine saline placebo as a control. Here's a list of them. It includes things like the pertussis vaccine, mumps vaccine, measles, and even COVID-19 vaccines. All were studied against a saline placebo in a randomized controlled trial. So right here, we can already say that this chart is just complete bogus. It's a complete lie. It is not telling the truth at all and not making a claim that is based in actual scientific evidence. But let's go even further than that. There are vaccines that were not studied in their original trials against a saline placebo. They were studied against another form of the vaccine that just didn't have the active components. In other words, it didn't have the parts of the pathogen that are going to give your immune system that immunological memory and that training. For example, the chickenpox vaccine didn't use a saline placebo. The people in the placebo group got an injection that contained the same parts of the chickenpox vaccine, just with no virus in it. But also in that trial, 38 kids in the placebo group ended up getting chickenpox. And that gets us started on a very important point. What these clinical trials of vaccines consistently show is that people who do not get the vaccine, people in the placebo group, get more disease, more infectious disease that is preventable by the vaccine. Another classic example are the huge polio vaccine trials that took place in 1954. This was a massive trial involving almost 2 million children. And in this group of children, about 200,000 got a placebo control, which was pretty much buffered salt water with some nutrients in it, i.e. saline, but also included a group of about 550,000 children who got nothing. Yeah, they were not injected with anything. They got nothing. The intention here was to use them as a bigger control group to see what happens when you don't inject someone with the polio vaccine. Do they get more polio? Do they suffer fewer adverse events? What happens? It turned out that they get more polio. They get more of a disease that could paralyze or kill them. That's what those trials showed. But this chart and Aaron Seary and Del Bigtree and Robert F. Kennedy Jr., they really don't want you to know the part about those 550,000 kids who got nothing in that trial. Instead, what they want to do is convince you that these trials were inadequate so that we could, I guess, redo them to learn what exactly? The truth is we would learn nothing from doing these trials again. We would see the same results that we saw before. We would see that the unvaccinated group and the kids who got nothing are going to be at higher risk of polio, a disease that, again, can paralyze and kill you. And they want to do this for all of the vaccines. That means they want to do it for each vaccine so that each kid in each of those trials that doesn't get a vaccine is going to be at higher risk of those preventable diseases and all of the suffering and death that it can cause. All to learn nothing. But Dr. Wilson, what possible motive would they have for doing this? Well, in my opinion, it's probably all the money they're making. These anti-vaccine groups make tons of money based on their propaganda that they put out. And make no mistake, the more misinformation they put out, the more money they make. Take, for example, the firm that Aaron Siri belongs to. In 2020, it made $2.1 million. And after just two years of the COVID pandemic, where misinformation flourished, that number more than doubled to $5 million in 2022. And that's just the law firm associated with this garbage chart. That doesn't include all of the other ways that these people make money. Such as this old gem from Del Bigtree, the guy who funds Aaron Siri's law firm, selling bricks for his compound in Texas at $100 to $500 a pop. And when I say selling bricks, I don't mean that. And I also don't mean he's sending people bricks. I mean people pay money to have their names put on a brick that goes on a walkway in his compound in Texas. We're offering you the opportunity to purchase one brick over the holidays that will be a part of this road, the high road. Bruh. These people are not out for you, they're not out for the average person, and they're not out for the people who have genuinely suffered rare adverse events from vaccines. No. All they care about, in my opinion, is making money, and even if they have to lie to do that, they will happily do it. 
One last thing about this chart that I will address before I end the video is that it is very common for anti-vaxxers to point to studies of second generation or newer vaccines that come onto the market. And in those clinical trials, those vaccines are tested against the previous version of that vaccine. This is a really standard thing in medicine. It is called a standard of care. Think of it this way. If you, say, have cancer and you enroll in a clinical trial for a new drug against that cancer, but that cancer already has several treatment options that are perfectly valid and likely to help your situation, you're not going to get nothing or just a placebo. You're going to also get that standard of care. You're going to stick to those evidence-based decisions that have already been shown to give you benefit while this new drug is introduced to see if the new drug adds to that benefit. That example is not a one-to-one -one comparison with vaccines here, but it's a similar principle. You have a vaccine that has already been studied, shown to be safe, shown to be effective, and shown to prevent the disease that it's meant to prevent. If you have a new version of that vaccine that just makes things a little bit better in a particular way, then you're not going to compare it against a group that gets nothing and expose that group to the risks of that infectious disease needlessly. You're going to compare it to the old version and see if it's just as safe and if it's better. And that's exactly what this chart tries to do in some examples. It's showing you examples where a vaccine is tested against an older version of a vaccine. These are all perfectly valid and ethical things to do in science. Anti-vaxxers say that vaccines are not tested in placebo-controlled trials. They definitely are, they just don't understand what placebo is. And they deny the ones where actual saline was used or actual nothing was used. They'll also say there's not enough follow-up with these studies. There is plenty of follow-up. It's called phase four surveillance, and it involves millions of people in the general population where safety and rare adverse events can be closely monitored. And finally, they'll demand that new studies should be done in order to show once and for all that these vaccines are safe. And that is insane. All that will do is put kids at unnecessary risk. And if these people are willing to do that in order to make money, then you definitely don't want to be listening to them. That's going to do it for the first video of Debunking Week. As always, all the links to all the science that I talk about in this video are in the description below so that you can check them out for yourself. There are some real good ones in there, so please check them out. And of course, if you enjoyed this, then don't forget to subscribe so you can catch me tomorrow where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then. Thank you.